This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. Corrective procedures for dyslexia later. Right now, here is a little information about what you're going to hear. These are a transcription of the printed book, which contains visual information in the form of illustrations, diagrams, and photos, so you should have the book handy when you listen to parts 2, 3, and 4. Now here's Dr. Joan Smith, co-founder and educational director of the Melvin Smith Learning Centers of California. Joan has a doctorate in education, is an educational psychologist, and speech pathologist. Dr. Smith has written her own book about dyslexia entitled, You Don't Have to Be Dyslexic. She's going to tell you a little bit about her own experience with Ron Davis's methods for correcting dyslexia. During the 25 years I've worked with students who have learning disabilities, I found out that it's always the student who teaches me what I need to know. So it's no surprise to me that someone with dyslexia has come forward to teach us what we need to know about dyslexia. As a student in school, Ron Davis suffered the injustices, unfair treatment, and humiliation familiar to most individuals with this unique learning style. The combination of talents and inefficiencies described in this book will be recognized immediately by others who have this unique mix of skills and difficulties. As a teacher, Ron gives us an experiential, first-person understanding of what dyslexic students go through in school. He describes how learning differs for the dyslexic in words we can easily understand. He makes the experience real and gives us the insights needed to teach effectively. Four different locks on learning are opened by the keys of Ron's accomplishments. First, the key to understanding that the dyslexic learning style is actually a talent. Second, the key to comprehending the dimensional awareness of people with dyslexia. Third, the key to conceptualizing what disorientation is. Fourth, the key to techniques that can control disorientation and thereby enable students to control dyslexic symptoms. Dyslexic individuals manifest a wide variety of dyslexic symptoms. That's why experts in different fields provide a variety of definitions. The most common characteristics are severe reading, writing, and spelling delays, and reversals of symbols. Other symptoms of the dyslexic syndrome include time and space confusion, disorganization, and difficulty with comprehension. Some dyslexics find they are totally unable to learn to read. As adults, they still struggle with putting together sounds and letters to decode words. They can't remember symbols or combinations of symbols. Words they know just don't look familiar on the page. These adults usually test below third grade level in word recognition, even though they may have had years of reading intervention in school. Other dyslexics can read fairly well. At least they sound fairly coherent when reading out loud. But they find they cannot understand what they read. They have to go over a sentence several times to glean some meaning from it. They tend to have severe difficulty in writing and find the symbols of language frustrating. Both types of dyslexics experience the same humiliation and frustration. They are technically illiterate and limited in their freedom to make the printed word work for them. Dyslexia has always provided a strong motivation for teachers and researchers. Their disabilities in reading and using their intelligence in a traditional manner have inspired the teachers and clinicians at the Melvin Smith Learning Centers to continue seeking answers and solutions to the problems of our students. In our efforts to assist our clients, we investigate any and all techniques that appear. I first became familiar with Ron's work in 1983 when a dyslexic student from our school's program was taken by his parents to the Reading Research Council for a week-long program of orientation counseling. This was our first introduction to a truly unique program. When the student returned from the program, he was definitely on a high from his success. He claimed he could concentrate and stay on task for the first time. I immediately asked him what had made such a difference. I can't tell you, Dr. Smith, he said. It might make you sick. Only dyslexic people can do this. I now understand that he was talking about the feeling of queasiness that disorientation sometimes has on people who aren't dyslexic. 
But at that time, I was confused and skeptical. I decided to wait and observe him in order to see whether there was any lasting change.